Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Back to Life episode 11. Yes. <laughs> I forgot what podcast we were. <laughs> it's Which only one. one. Yeah. It's only one. You're not doing more than one. So <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we are, um, I'm here with Stephanie Murray. Uh, I am Sherry, if you don't know. Um, and we're excited to get started on, see what happens with this one. Right. Yeah. How did you feel about uh, the last one we did? I, I just felt like it was divinely orchestrated. I feel like we were willing and we went where we were supposed to go. Yeah. And I got some feedback from my mom and one of her really good friends. And they were just saying that they were so proud of us that we were really brave with what we shared and um, that it would help people. And it was just so nice Yeah, to get that feedback. It yeah. really meant a lot. And when I watched it back, I, I really honestly couldn't remember or I couldn't even grasp everything we really did touch on mm -hmm. and it just flowed and it just felt, um, it just felt like a gift and I was just really grateful to be able to do this with you. Honestly, that's really how I felt at the end of it. Like we did the right thing and I'm glad I get to do it with you. Yeah. 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 It was, I appreciate that. I, mm. I, I feel the same way. Um, I, I listened to it back. I was, I, I watched it a couple of times and mm -hmm. I, I got, I got some more healing from it just by hearing some yes. of the things that we talked about because it was you know very sensitive topics yes and so if you haven't watched it i would encourage you to go back and watch that um or listen to it if you're not watching because some some people are listening on spotify or mm -hmm. wherever wherever this is all the platforms mm -hmm. um and i yeah i just um i think that it makes it easier to be vulnerable when you have somebody you feel safe with yes you know, and of course we're sharing this with the world. So right. <laughs> yikes. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I do, I do appreciate that. Cause mm -hmm. I think that, um, it does, you, you know, sharing something sensitive like that, you've got to really feel safe with someone. Yes. And so. I do, I appreciate something you said, um, that I don't think I ever heard language for. You said you were talking about to be, to be so young, like the empathy that you had. Because that's the empathy I had to get for myself when I oh, was a kid. Yeah. And so to hear you like speak that back to me really meant a lot. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're welcome. It really yeah. did. And I was like, wow. So that was healing for me, like you said, when I read it. You had to give yourself the same, right. the same thing. <laughs> right. And to hear someone else. See, because I had to do that like years ago. And I and to hear someone else do that for me, does that make sense? It yes, just it really does. helped. It does. Yeah, it like reinforced what I had to do for myself. So right. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, what, where are we going today? <laughs> so you, last time I know that you spoke about, let's start telling our testimony. Oh, yeah. Like how, how did... How like, did we get here? Yeah, how did we get here? How, how did we get, get here? here back to yes. life? Yes, and I think uh, we also spoke about, we'll tell... Um, tell, we'll tell one of our stories and then tell the other one. Yeah. And we'll kind of go that way. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think we should start with you. <laughs> Perfect. Of course. Start with the easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Right. Probably either one of them are probably that easy. Yeah. Um, well, they're easy. Um, well, yeah, I, I mean, I could do that. I could, okay. I could do that. So, um, I guess I would start with, um, um, well, one of the things that I would like to, to start with mm -hmm. is that one of the things that I realized the last couple of months, and I think I might have shared this with you, mm -hmm. is that when I when I would look back at my childhood, that I always see, I'd always see like this horrible traumatic mm -hmm. childhood. Mm -hmm. However, God has restored so much and healed so many things that now when I look back, I can see things that are that are. The, where God had his hand in my life. Oh, and so one of the big ones I would say is that, and this is, this is really huge is that he showed me how, how my mom always pointed me to God. So my mom was, um, I would say schizophrenic, um, 
paranoid, delusional. Like, I'm not really sure what her diagnosis was. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, like in the in the 70s, they didn't. They were still working through that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> they were still is, working through that kind of stuff. So it's so deep to even think about time wise. That mm-hmm. is such a truth when you think about it can dramatically change in 30, 40, 50 Mm -hmm. years. Just the knowledge, the understanding, the language, like it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it changed drastically from the seventies to the eighties. And I believe, and I, I think I read this when I was, um, going to college. Um, I actually went to college. Um, when I was taking a, a social work class, and they were talking about um, how they had animal rights laws before they had a child abuse laws, which is kind of weird, disturbing. <laughs> very disturbing. Mm-hmm. So they just, you know, we, we just, children weren't treated very nicely. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I was not treated very nicely at all. So mm-hmm. it, by my mother. And so um, God showed me that one of the things that she did not take away from me, take, was that, did I say that correctly? <laughs> take away from me yes. was, um, church Mm -hmm. she always pointed me to church she was always like go to church go to church and she never used church against me and Mm -hmm. like she used all kinds of other things against me Mm -hmm. never she never did never did with church and she's always pointing me to go to church wow and so i'm really grateful for that god Mm -hmm. used her in that way and so it was this he shed some light there where i hadn't seen it before and i was i mean i used to walk to sunday school by myself wow like, I mean, I was young, like mm-hmm. back then they didn't care. You could just walk the right. streets. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like eight years old. Going, yeah. That's how I'm going, I was too. Going to the pool. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how are you going to the swimming pool? You're only eight years old. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember, uh, my aunt was upset cause I took my cousin, my cousin's like four. <laughs> so <laughs> four, to the pool. a four and eight year old, you know, walking, yeah. walking four, four or five blocks to the swimming pool. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, so I actually gave my life to Christ when I was, I think I was four or five Mm -hmm. and I was with my mom at the time. My mom gave her life to Christ Mm -hmm. at, you know, around the same time. And, Mm -hmm. um, we were also baptized together, which is really special. Um, and I've actually been baptized twice. Mm -hmm. The first one didn't take, so we had to do it again. (laughs) Don't me again. The second one didn't, the second one didn't work either. But anyway, (laughs) We'll talk more about that. That was in my 20s. You know, I was like thinking that, oh, well, if I just get dunked, I can wash all this, all this sin off me. Mm -hmm. But then I just went out and sinned again. So it didn't, it didn't take. Did you, so you didn't, you, did you not feel like, um, you didn't feel different after being baptized? Oh, no. Really? No. So I've heard so many people say that they did. I'm well, when I was five, I didn't know what I was doing. See, so it was way too early. It was way too way early too early. Me. I believe and my that. dad, my dad even argued against that. He was like, "She's not gonna know what's going on." And he was mm-hmm. right. I had, mm-hmm. I, he was right. I didn't mm-hmm. know what I was doing. I knew I was asking Jesus to come into my heart, and I had, I had memorized scriptures. Mm-hmm. I started memorizing scriptures when I was really young. I, mm-hmm. I remember being outside bouncing a ball, mm-hmm. and and practicing and reciting scriptures because wow. I wanted to win the toy and in, in Sunday school, Sunday school. <laughs> and I'd always win oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I'd memorize, I just spent hours memorizing scriptures. Mm-hmm. Um, so I lost my train of thought. Where were we going with that? So you didn't feel different. Oh, so at five, I was like, right. I don't even You're know what. I'm just doing it because my mom is doing it. Mm-hmm. I want to please my mom. I want my mom to love me. Right. So I was doing it for those reasons. And mm-hmm. then, and then, you know, I go on and I live my life and then it's now I'm in my twenties and I was actually, I was actually stationed in England mm-hmm. and there was a, the supervisor that I had, they were Christians Mm -hmm. and they were like, come to our church. So I went to their church in England and it was really nice little church. So I went there and, um, um, they, she was ministering to me and stuff like that. And like, and then she did the prayer and like, Oh, you know, accept Jesus in your heart. And so I did it, but it just seems like at that time it was like more of a head thing for me. That makes sense. Like, I was just really in my head with a lot of it. Like, I didn't know how to, 
I didn't know how to receive it in my heart. I, like I would say it was in my heart, but mm-hmm. really no, it was more like in my, it was in my head. And then like, I knew I was doing the wrong things. So what I mean by that is like, I was still living life like I was living, like I hadn't changed anything. It right. wasn't like, I don't know. I did not feel like I feel now. I feel completely different now. Mm-hmm. So, um, the comparison is like, I don't, there isn't any comparison. Plus I didn't know, I didn't understand who I was as a person. Right. And I didn't, um, I was still trying to figure out who I was and I didn't have any clue what my identity in Christ was like, mm-hmm. I'm not even close. And I think I, even up until a couple of years ago, probably still was battling who I really am in Christ. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I just went through the motions and did the baptism. And I remember, I remember the pastor coming to the dorms and us hiding the alcohol. They're like, the pastor's here, hide the alcohol. And we're all hiding the alcohol because we think that we're going to go to hell if he sees the alcohol. Aww. And like, because there was like a couple of us that would go to this church. Mm-hmm. And we, I love going to the church. It was not, it was nice, but I didn't feel, I don't know. The there was just something. The heart. I just didn't get it. Right. I just did not get it. And so I just, all I felt was like, God's con- God's looking down on me. And like, I'm always doing all these wrong things. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's kind of like, you know, like a parent, like how a parent yes. would see a child, like how I thought my parents would see me. Mm-hmm. And so, so it was kind of in that respect. So a lot of people do that they see they whatever relationship they have with their parents they ascribe to god yeah and that that is yeah so it's like a condemning god it's like i can't do anything right Mm. you know like i always felt guilty i felt ashamed Mm. um i felt lots and lots of shame i mean i was i was sexually active Mm. so like I felt ashamed from that. I mean, just everything I did, I felt ashamed of. And so, um, yeah, so I just, I think it was more of a head thing than it was a heart thing. And, um, and then when I, I, so I think, I think it did start, I think God really did start ministering to my heart though, when I was in Alaska. Okay. And so I, I, went from England. Where did I go from England? I went to South Carolina. I was there for about five years. And then I got, I, then I went to Korea for a year and then I was, and then I went over to Alaska and I remember this guy had, um, little cards on his desk and had grapes on it. And Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, what's this? He goes, Oh, that's the church that I go to. I was Mm -hmm. like, Oh, you guys drink wine there? (laughs) I was like, I'm in, let's go get some vineyards. So it was a vineyard church and oh. it was non-denominational. Okay. And I started going there mm-hmm. and I, I really did start to feel something moving in my heart wow. uh, around that time. Mm-hmm. So it was a little bit different. So I started to, uh, open up more and mm-hmm. I would pray more and I would, and I did groups and I, you know, right. I started to learn more. And so I really felt like I was, I was more opened up there, but I didn't mm-hmm. get baptized again. Right. Um, because the first two times were not. <laughs> that didn't work so <laughs> anyway <laughs> so anyway um and then i met my husband there so oh, i met in I met alaska in alaska and mm-hmm. he was um a pastor youth pastors youth pastor there and i met him there and we got married not right away it wasn't like the next day or anything <laughs> it seems like this is a vast timeline um and i think it was about a year branch later. did you join air force air force yeah, okay air force okay yeah, so um, I met him there, and then we mm. ended up getting married there, and we left Alaska and went to Washington State. And then, you know, I would say that I had I was under a lot of um, illusions, where like I thought that by getting married to this man, mm-hmm. that I would have this good, solid Christian life, like. We would pray together. We would read our Bibles. And like, mm-hmm. I had this whole vision of what I thought it was going to be like. And it was nothing like that at all. Wow. It was like complete opposite. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of, lot of problems and the, mm-hmm. a lot of problems with him and a lot of problems with me just separately. And like a lot of things that were like, 
secretive that I found out that came out. I see. Yeah, and that made it really, really difficult for me because mm-hmm. it was like, well, wait a minute, God. Like, I thought this was, like, supposed to be, like, this right. great union. And I waited, I waited before I consummated Right. You know, like, Mm -hmm. not that I had waited before, but like, Mm -hmm. I mean, you just wanted to start new with him. I wanted to have like this new relationship and, Mm -hmm. um, and ended up being more like he ended up, he was addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even know that was happening at first. So Mm -hmm. there's just a lot lot of this uncovering kind of came out and it wasn't all it was looked like it was Right. right. Like, you know, there's things on Facebook now that you see, you're like, that, that doesn't look real. Like, it looks like a perfect family. Wow. It looks like this perfect family, but you know that behind the scenes, it's not it's a facade. It's yeah. not perfect. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that are going on that, <laughs> that are not, mm-hmm. not healthy. And that was my marriage. And so I really, I really battled and struggled with it. And I, um, I had uh, two stepkids. Like, he was, he had, two kids from prior marriage so mm-hmm. they were in the fold and then I had custody of one of my sisters so she was in she was in the family and it was just a really difficult mm-hmm. difficult time like I didn't know how to handle a lot of it and so um I fell into a, a, a really big depression after my second child was born mm-hmm. I just I I was a mess. I don't even know how to explain it. I, I was in a fog for probably a couple of years what? where I was just like, I want out of this. I don't even know how to get out of this. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, stop going to church. Cause we moved from Alaska. We moved to Washington state and then everything kind of just fell apart a little bit. Went to church off and on, but not, we just, we found one church and we were regulars there for a little while. And then it just kind of fell apart. Mm-hmm. Um, so God was like, a foreigner. <laughs> I mean, I would pray some pray sometimes for him to help me get out of this thing I'm in. Right. But um it was just a lot of depression and mm-hmm. um and then um and then my husband had an affair, started having an affair and then that that just that was like the the straw that broke the camel's back. That was it. Right. And actually it actually saved me in a lot of ways because it got me to wake up and go, mm-hmm. wait a minute, like am I gonna am I doing this? Like, what are we doing this? Like, what are we doing? Wow. So I woke up out of my, my fog I was in and I started to get help and Mm -hmm. I went to counseling and got on my feet and stuff like that and, um, separated from him. And I did, I did actually want to work it out. You know, I was like, well, can we work this out? Like, I don't really want to get a divorce, a divorce. Mm -hmm. And, um, cause I felt like, and part of that was because I felt like I would be looked down upon. Oh, so that wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, because I really want to work out. It was more right. of like, what cared more about what other people thought of me. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but really I just, that marriage wasn't meant to be, it wasn't mm-hmm. meant to be in that. Um, and so anyway, long, that long process, you know, was... Yeah. The process of getting the divorce. Was yeah, oh, okay. the divorce. Like, cause I I filed for legal separation first, hoping we would reconcile. reconcile. Got you. And I worked with the church a lot with, you know, hopefully you know to help me help us reconcile. But wow. it just didn't it didn't work because he didn't want to make changes. He didn't want to make certain changes. Right. And um, he he really needed some help too. Mm-hmm. Like I mm-hmm. I needed counseling, but so did he. Right. And he just never he just never got any help. Committed from mm-hmm. it so it just didn't work um and then and then i just was a single mom mm-hmm. for a long time and lived that crazy life yes. <laughs> Ain't no joke. that's a crazy that's a crazy time mm-hmm. i i um i think that i just give a big shout out to single moms everywhere because mm-hmm. it is a big job oh it's yeah. a big job um, and now my kids are adults, so it's, it's kind of crazy talking about it right now. Yeah. Like, it's like, that seems like a whole different I, I, life, yeah. a whole different life. I actually, when I was writing down, I was writing my timeline down. Mm-hmm. I've done it. I've done it a couple of times, but it's like almost, it's almost different worlds. Yeah. So it's like you have the development world where you're growing up mm-hmm. and then you have your, your, um, you're starting to become an adult world. 
-hmm. and then your adult world, and then like your adult adult world. <laughs> like now, yeah. now we're mature. Now yes, we're, that's such a huge now, difference. Yeah, but I think um, I think as far as like my my the heart of Jesus. I mean, I think that I had um moments where I was in Alaska and where, when I was in Washington state where I had moments of being touched by God mm -hmm. and so I knew I knew like it I knew he existed right um when I when I started when I went through the divorce though I went through a time of rebellion where I was just like there is no way there's a God like there's right. like this is insane like all nobody should have to go through all of these things mm -hmm. and um I felt a lot of pain um, from the divorce because I, I believed in the fairy tale like I believed that there was going to be a knight in shining armor yeah and that he was going to fulfill all my dreams and um and I wrote a book about about and I put this in there about like I had this idea that like he was going to fill my love void yeah. so however it's just not possible for someone to fill it it just mm -hmm. it just won't happen like that's right. it doesn't come from an external place but i didn't know that at the time i was like this is what everybody does they right. get married and they live happily ever after um i was talking to one of my friends um about happiness and joy mm -hmm. and the difference the difference between happiness and joy and happiness is external and it's fleeting like we you know we were laughing a lot before right. this and it's fleeting like it's gone mm -hmm. And it's different than joy in your heart. Joy in your heart is, is it lasts. It's mm -hmm. something that lasts, lasts forever. Like, you know, thinking yeah. about, you know, maybe your, um, like I think about my daughter and just her holding a flower and that brings me joy. Yeah. And it, even though that it's an external picture, but it just brings something into my heart where it's like, mm -hmm. I really, I just really love that memory, you know, mm -hmm. and it's there forever. Um, so anyway, I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent. So. No, no, that makes so much sense because I think a lot of people that are hurting and they get married and they expect that. And how old were you? Were you in your twenties when that happened? When you got when married? I got married? I was 30 when I got married. See that. It was even, even late. Like, even that, even that honestly, because it is. It's later than a lot of people, I would say. Well, now I think we're more in... People more later. Yeah, or later. Yeah. However, that's still pretty early in life, yeah. getting married. Yeah. And for you to want that that love and that yeah. um, acceptance in that home, you know what I'm saying? I just, so yeah. I can definitely... I think that that's really important to talk about that you were looking on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every single one of us... Uh, I don't think there's one person on the planet that doesn't look for it on the outside. Yeah, it's like it's like looking for lovable outside of you. Yeah, when lovable isn't outside of you, mm -hmm. and there, there's no, like that. That's like my message that I want right. to tell everybody is that it's that you're never gonna find it outside of you. It is mm -hmm. not gonna work. Like it'll work for a little while, right? And then it's not going to work. Then it's then you're not gonna be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, it's fleeting. It's not. Um, it's not any like it's not sustainable. Expecting thing. somebody to feel you're lovable mm -hmm. is is really setting yourself up for a failure. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was talking with someone and and they were like, yeah, I'm gonna meet this guy and um, I'm really excited about meeting him and all this stuff and 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 I used to be in this place of mm -hmm. that place where it's like. I just got to get this guy. Like I got to find the guy. Yes. I got to find the guy that, you know, that I can be with, that I can mm. get married to, that I can live happily ever after with. And, yeah. and my whole mission is this guy. And I lived that way for so long and it's so such an unhappy yes. place to be. It mm -hmm. really is. It just, it's depressing. Yeah. And it, the reason why it's depressing is because, there's no way it will ever work that way. Yeah. It's not gonna, like I could find a guy, but it's not, it's going to be fleeting. It's not, they're not right. going to, they're not, they're not designed to fulfill my love deficit. Exactly. And so that's why identity in Christ is so important. Like mm -hmm. knowing who you are and that's what, that's right. what I've been discovering and mm -hmm. um, really want to just tell the world this stuff. Like, 
you're not going to find it outside of you and like no amount, no, you know, you can get married and it's, that's going to be fleeting too. That's just a day that you have exactly. a wedding day, but you're going to have a marriage and you're going to have this, you're going to, you're going to be looking at this person to fulfill this void and they're not going to be able to, and they're going right. to disappoint you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the healthy way is that you, you know, you, you love who you are, you know who you are, you know what your identity is, and then somebody will come along. Right. You don't have to, like, hunt, hunt it down and yeah, strap it to the hood of your car. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm saying, yeah, like I wanted to do so many times. Yeah. These poor guys, it's not like spitting, these poor guys didn't know it hit them. They're like, whoa, wait a minute, slow your roll. <laughs> We've only known each other like a two months. Like, hold on a minute. You already want to get married? Yeah. So like, you know, I would want to rush into things yes. and then it would be yeah. not the right person. Mm -hmm. Thank God. God protected me from some, from some things that could have gone way, yeah. way wrong. Whew. <laughs> Just dodged some bullets. Jeez. <laughs> I think about it now. I'm like, what was I thinking? You know, yeah. what was I thinking? So you dodged some rocket launchers. Yeah. I mean, I really went through, I really put myself through some hell, like mm -hmm. with the relationships. And, and I think part of that is part of that is healing. Like, you mm -hmm. know, unfortunately, sometimes we have to learn the hard way. Yeah. Um, it's like, okay. Yeah. Like we talked about last time, what, what, why you're in this abusive relationship. And it's like, well, I'm reconciling my relationship with my mom because I really wanted to fix my mother. And so yeah. if I fix him, then maybe that could be, that could be some healing for me. It's not a, not a fun way to go. No, <laughs> it's not a fun all. way to go. Um, so I think that, you know, um, I mean, just this, and I was sharing this, sharing this before is that cancer being diagnosed with, really two different types of cancer um it has not been the hardest thing that i've ever been through and i would say that and i know a lot of people are like what that's crazy really seriously like i i lived in fear every day of my life that mm -hmm. i wasn't sure from one day to the next what was going to happen and i um i remember um you know i would love going to school i love going to school i loved after school activities, I would right. do whatever I could to just stay away from my house. Right. Mm. And so going to school is no problem. Mm. Um, you know, like some kids don't want to go to school. My son, one of my sons did not want to go to school. And I was like, I could not wait to go to school. Right. And then coming home, different story. So mm -hmm. I, I just remember getting on the bus, feeling the, feeling my stomach turn into knots. And then by the time I got home, I am like sweating and I'm anxious mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen. And mm -hmm. I mean, there were times where I came home and my room would be messed up. So she'd mess my room up on purpose. And then I would get in trouble for my room being a mess. Oh so then I would get in trouble, you know, get basically physically abused. And then there was a lot of, you know, it's a, it's a psychology, like a, uh, psychological game too. Yes. Like, Yes. Kind of like a abuse, a exactly. psychological, psychological abuse where mm -hmm. it was like, where I would, there would be times where I would second guess myself, where I'd be like, did I, did I mess my room up? That's what I'm saying. That's did I do, crazy. did yeah. I do, did I do that? I don't remember doing that. And like mm -hmm. math, I'm ho horrible at math. And part of it is because I remember, um, I was working on math problems and they were written out in pencil, like two mm -hmm. plus two, four plus five, whatever. And I would write down what they were. And then my mom would grade the paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that she would change the answers. And oh, so I would never know. Goodness. And then, then they would, then I would get the marks wrong. So whenever it came to math, wow. I would constantly second guess, well, did, is this the right answer or not the right answer? Oh, I don't know which God. one it's going to be. So there was a lot of, physical trauma and mm -hmm. a lot of um psychological trauma right that I, ha I have had to really untangle from mm -hmm. it's taken a long time like yes. i'm still i still work on it mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know like mm -hmm. i had 
so they had to do some tests for me because of the cancer stuff. And I, and I'm just looking at this math going, I'm not answering any of these. Oh, <laughs> like, skip, goodness. skip. Yeah. So that stuff is deep. Yeah. So, you know, I, my heart goes out to people that have been through some of this psychological trauma. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so going home, you know, was always like, like I'd go to turn the knob and I'd be so scared to go mm. inside. So it's different. What's different between that and the cancer is that I don't, I don't, I'm not living in fear right mm -hmm. now. I don't live in fear and doubt. I don't, right. I, I feel completely safe mm -hmm. and I, you know, I read committed or whatever you call it, recommitted, rededicated my life to Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have never felt more nurtured and more cared for in my life. And mm -hmm. I, I, it's almost hard to explain. Mm -hmm. It's like Alice Cooper. I don't know if it, I mean, we were talking about Alice Cooper. You're like, who's Alice Cooper? I'm like, okay, you're showing my age here. <laughs> Alice Cooper's a rock star. Uh -huh. And he used to like be like wear black and kind of satanic. Mm -hmm. Well, he committed his life to Christ. And he, mm -hmm. he says, it's just, it's hard to explain. It's just like, poof, just one day you get it. Yeah. You just get it. And mm -hmm. so I feel, um, I, again, I, I remember looking in the mirror like last month and I, my, I lost my hair again. I lost my hair to radiation and I'm just looking at my bald head and I'm like, I'm kind of like a baby. Like I'm having like this rebirth, <laughs> Yeah. you know, like yeah, it's true. like, I just came out of the womb. I wow. mean, hopefully not like this, but <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm having this rebirth happen yeah. where it's like, and God, and that's another thing I will say that has been really amazing is I was very neglected and my all my brothers and sisters were very neglected and in, in the self-care piece or the mm -hmm. caring for yourself like right. brushing your teeth and mm -hmm. taking showers and mm -hmm. putting lotion on and doing all those things we were not taught any of that stuff wow. like we were not we were just kind of left mm -hmm. and if it came down to toothpaste or cigarettes you're going to get cigarettes. You're not going to get toothpaste or tampons. Wow. Toothpaste and tampons. Wow. Um, and so, which are critical to a child's exactly. self-esteem, right? Exactly. And so what's been happening though for me is God is like totally restoring all of that, that sense of like, it's okay for you to nurture yourself and take, like, mm -hmm. I, I have it made. Like I... I have a ritual where I take, I take, um, Epsom salt baths, detox, detox baths. I have mm -hmm. oils. I have, <laughs> I have candles everywhere. <laughs> I have it made. Yes. I have yes. it made. So like, I feel like God has taught me how to take care of myself. Yes. For sure. Um, in a way where I've never, I've never experienced it before. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in that respect, can the cancer is a blessing because it's wow. brought me to this place of like, you don't have a choice. Mm. I do not have a choice. I have to be, yeah. my health has to be number one. It just has to be. And like, it's like, everybody leave. I'm taking a bath. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. no, I have all these, like, I have these like morning and nighttime rituals. Yeah. I kind of fallen off on the morning one. Cause I just don't want to get up now. Yeah. <laughs> You're resting. Yeah, yeah. I'm resting now. But yeah. yeah so, um, I feel like, God can restore yes. you back to health. So I have a question. How, what experiences did you have that helped to begin to teach you and solidify your identity in Christ? Like what, can you tell us some testimonies uh, or experiences, whatever comes to mind first? Oof. I just got it. <laughs> I just got it. Wow. So there is a, there is a Psalm, <laughs> Psalm 139 uh -huh. and you can go read that Psalm and it's all about your identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I just read that and I replaced, um, you replace I with your name. And mm -hmm. so, so it's just, and I actually will do some readings on that cause it's, it's super powerful. I don't right. know. I just got it. Wow. I just don't, I don't know if there is, um, it's like Alice Cooper. He's like, I don't know if there's a profound moment. Just poof. Just, mm -hmm. I just got it. So I think, I think that so if I were, 
I would say that it wasn't just like this, something came down and like, mm -hmm. saw a flash of light. It's nothing like that. I think I would say, to be honest about it completely, is that, well, why would I lie? It's like um, collective for me. I think yes. it's collective. Yeah. Like I had to go through all these other things in order just to get it. Wow. I just get it. You know what that reminds me of is in the Bible, like a lot of times they talk about farming and different things to get the people to see a uh, word picture, pretty much, um, to get them to learn, like, you know, parables and stuff. Okay. And in the Bible, it talks a lot about like turning up the soil that our oh, hearts okay. are soil and it's turning up the soil. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like what you're saying is all those different experiences were tilling the soil of mm -hmm. your heart. Well, and cancer is definitely an eye-opening experience. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, being diagnosed with two different cancers and one being terminal. Right. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Uh, so I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. So now what? So now what? But we're right. all going to die. Right. So so I when I started to work on death, Mm -hmm. I started to like, that's where God comes in. That's where God wow. came in. Um, he has just been like pursuing me mm -hmm. relentlessly. Like I would say, um, right. You know, when I was diagnosed with the breast cancer, when I was on the couch, it was like, mm -hmm. do you want to get well? Like, do you, do you really want to lay on the couch or do you want to mm -hmm. get up? Wow. And I was like, well, I want to get better, so mm -hmm. I'm going to get up. Yes. And that was when God, I could hear his voice. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was pursuing me relentlessly. I still had it. I still didn't quite get it. Right. But I was getting there. Yeah. And so he just kept on, like, mm. it just reminds me of when he called Mary by name. Yeah. And he's like, I call you by name. I call you by name. And it's like, mm -hmm. I am not giving up on you. Mm -hmm. There is no way I'm ever giving up on you. And so that's how I felt. That's yes. how I've been feeling is that he's just not, uh, he's not going to give up on me. And I finally turned to him mm -hmm. instead of no way. kept going my own way. Mm -hmm. Cause I, it's like, I'm a stubborn, like I want to do it my way. Like I want it to be my knowledge, my mm -hmm. understanding. And it, it, it doesn't work that way with God. And it, it's just so much easier when you just let him do it. Yeah. Like, surrender. Yes. yes. And he can divinely orchestrate so many things mm -hmm. and so many, um, I would tell, I would, this is one of the biggest things ever is just the amount of healing that's happened, mm -hmm. um, in my family, mm -hmm. not just with me, but right. like it with my kids, mm -hmm. I have seen 180 changes in my kids. Wow. Like, I'm like, wow, this is just, well, right, I, I just need to get out of my own way mm -hmm. and let God take over. It's yes. like, okay, <laughs> I trust you with my kids. I trust you with, you know, my life. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I keep seeing a vision like of every circumstance, situation that you went through and God being there and pursuing you. And like I said, turning over the soil of your heart. And then when you heard psalms 139 the scripture says that like his word is seed and that it, it fell on good ground that could actually take it in and yeah. actually produce and grow yeah. your identity yeah. and like what you really believed like that's just the vision i just keep yeah. seeing as it, you're like talking about it. i just see like such a like a beautiful harvest of love yeah. and goodness because you received, you actually were able to receive that word. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> took me a lot of these. I think it does. I mean, to give your, to acknowledge you, you had so much things that, that so much hurt and pain and trauma and shame. Yeah. And all these disappointments and unmet expectations and, you had so much that would like make the the soil of your heart hard. You yeah. know that would make it callous. It's the opposite. Yeah. I finally, finally. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I think I did have there was some hardness there a little sure. bit, but I think it's hard. Yeah. To yeah. It is a lot of things. I think. Mm -hmm. I think part of it. This is just hitting me now. I think part of it is what softened my heart. What's what softened Ooh, my heart is helping yes. other people. Wow. And I see, like, seeing their pain and seeing what they're going through. Wow. That softens my heart a little bit more mm. to where, because I had, I don't know, I just have always had that 
gift of empathy and of being able to definitely do being able to like get to the heart of what it is Mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Yes. And so almost, I I don't want to say profit, but it's close. It's, it is. It's supernatural. Mm -hmm. Jonathan and I have talked about it. It's supernatural. Yeah. It feels that way. Cause like, I don't even know half the things that are coming out of my mouth at some Mm -hmm. when I talk to people. Mm -hmm. So I really do believe that that has kept me, humble Mm. you know what i mean like humble and like gosh you know people people are resilient and the things that people go through you're just like holy cow like Mm -hmm. you couldn't even imagine so like i went through some horrible things but i've heard some things that will top mine you know like not that i'm here to top but like where i feel like gosh i couldn't even i wouldn't even know what Mm -hmm. to do with that right you know what i mean Mm. so just being able to um you know, be, become a counselor and become, you know, being able to help all, all, all these so many people that have been right. in pain and give them some hope, you know, and now yes. now it's completely yes. changed. Now it's now the hope is in Christ. Yes. Right. It's like now now it's you could it could even be even better. Yeah, <laughs> could be fantastic. Yeah. And so um, I mean, I I I don't feel like I'm a. I'm not a, I don't feel like a cancer patient. I don't feel like I, Mm-mm. um, like one of my friends and we were talking about this earlier is that she's like, you, you, you like treat it like an adventure. And I'm like, well, I think that's how we should treat life as an adventure. Like, right. We, I don't think we're meant to be just following and, and always in pain and suffering. Right. I just don't, I don't, I don't think that that's what God wants for our lives. Exactly. So I'm going to do whatever I can in my power, as long as I'm living, mm-hmm. is to teach people to get back to life. Like, yes. get back to life and get, get living, <laughs> go on adventures. I'm, yes. I'm going to go on a camp at the end of the month. I'm going on a camp. I'm, um, I'm going to Arizona. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm doing all the things that I want to do, like, yes. for the first time in my life where I don't feel like I have to, I don't have to prove anything. I don't have to be you know, go out and make tons of money, you know, like that was another thing that I think held me back, um, from Christ was making success the center of my world. Gotcha. Uh Uh-huh. You know, like, oh, you got to be successful and you got to do all these classes to be successful and, you know, all these Mm -hmm. things. And so, um, that isn't in the center of my life anymore. And so it, it, it's such a relief it really is such a relief like to not have that anymore right it's just lifted off of me and mm-hmm. i i prayed you know i was like okay god just pe- please just provide for me so i don't have to worry about it and i don't have to worry about it so <laughs> there you go look at god look at him go <laughs> i know it's like super who knew <laughs> yes he's our provider supernatural for sure oh that is just that is beautiful so from going from relationships to success like um you know external yeah still external still all external external. wow it's like replacing one for so i wasn't getting the relationship so i'm like there's nobody out there there's no guys out there there no one's gonna rescue you you're crazy yeah just just make money. Yes, that's all. That's the just, just do that. <laughs> just make ten thousand a month. You'll be fine. Yeah. And so that that's what I that's did. I switched. Time. Yeah. I switched it from from the male to the to the to, to the, the dollar signs. Yes. <laughs> Preflo dollar. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's like no, go, 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 no, I'm here. not. Yeah, or I'm serving people. Serving people. Yeah. 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 Oh, there's so much. There's, there's so many idols we can pick. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> t- totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and and that was what I would do is like, oh, I'm helping so many people, mm-hmm. and then I'm making all this money, and mm-hmm. um, I, I, uh, and we talk about receivership and mm-hmm. giving, and and it's like it's not about getting, mm-hmm. it's about giving, and when you give, then you are able to receive. The more right. you give, the more you're able to receive, mm-hmm. and like one of the things that I had a hard time was rece- was receiving wow. before, like I don't need help. Like oh, I could do it myself. I don't need anybody's help. Mm-hmm. And so I've gotten really good at receivership. Wow. Really good at it. So like there, and there's an energy of it too. Mm-hmm. And a shout out to anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody sending me anonymous gifts. Oh wow. Since, since I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I've been getting wow. anonymous gifts in the mail. Oh, 
which I find very hard. It's just That's very so hard. Cool. I love it so much because I don't know who it is. And I, I think That's that makes so it even cool. more special. Yes. Because this person, whoever this person is, mm -hmm. is in a, in a state of receivership because they're not, they're not, I'm not giving them anything. Right. I mean, I'm acknowledging they're anonymous. Yeah. Watch them come on. Watch them be like, come on with a, like a cloak. <laughs> Hi. Guess who I am? <laughs> anonymous guy. Yeah, I'm anonymous. Yeah. I hope it's not that one. <laughs> right, not that anonymous. Not the other one. <laughs> yeah, so I got um. That is so neat. I got a journal. Wow. Uh, I got a journal called the the Shy Dragon. Uh huh. I thought that was an interesting name, oh, the Shy wow. Dragon. I could totally relate to being the Shy Dragon. <laughs> Um, so that was the latest anonymous gift, but like, I think that that person, um, wow. is, deserves just heaps and heaps of, of, Goodness. of stuff, mm -hmm. just stuff, not stuff, <laughs> love, just yeah. heaps and heaps, heaps and heaps of love poured over them. And so, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. There's another question I had for you. So you were saying, um, to get your to really receive Christ, you had to get your identity first, and then after you got your a more sure identity. Well, I had to. I think it's more like not getting the identity, mm -hmm. but accepting that's who I am. Oh, that makes so much sense because getting is yeah is you doing yeah. Oh, that so makes so I, much so sense. Yes. One of the things that I that I when I was I was praying and I was like God, I feel like I'm a different person. Wow. And he said, no, you're not a different person. You're just always who you were meant to be. Yeah. Ooh, that hits me. Yeah. Because that's the truth. Wow. We just forget who we are mm -hmm. because of what the world, all the stuff mm -hmm. in the world that comes in. Right. Like I forgot who I was. Yeah. So it's just it's like getting introduced to who you actually are. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. So that's, that's, that was a profound moment for me where Ooh. it was like, oh, Wow, like yeah. I really, this is who I was always meant to be. This wow. person that I <laughs> love God, and I yeah. now I can talk about Christ openly and not feel embarrassed. Yeah, because before I was like, oh, I'm gonna say Jesus. I don't yeah. want to offend anybody. Right. They're gonna think I'm a creepy Christian. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, really good. yeah, so yeah, I think that um, that's really when it really when it hit me was like no you're not becoming a different person you're just becoming who you're always meant to be yeah because i mean i was i mean i'm i'm like watching my language mm -hmm. you know i'm like i said that i did an f-bomb the other day i was like oh <laughs> i was doing so well <laughs> and so um watching my lang like cleaning up my language mm -hmm. and paying attention to what words i say not just bad words but mm -hmm. like there are other bad words that are not cuss words. Right. Um, and watching that kind of language and then watching like interactions with my son. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I have to bring this up cause this is, this is a, one of the profound moments with my, with one of my sons. Mm -hmm. Um, for some reason there's been this like, um, tension. Mm -hmm. And so like, we'll be talking he'll be like, no, that's not right. Like, <laughs> like, you know, kind of like, attitude right you know and i'm like oh, what is going on and i'm like okay god just give me the words to to express how i'm feeling like what's going mm -hmm. on i'm like i need to tell him that he's got this tone of voice with me and it's really it's really kind of hurting my feelings mm -hmm. and i don't know if i've done something wrong or like what it is so i brought it up to him and he goes i and he goes okay and i was dropping him off at work when i when we when i brought it up mm -hmm. and i said yeah i just wanted to bring it up i don't know like if if i've done something wrong like if mm -hmm. there's because like you know when when you're irritated you there's something going on underneath right. that's causing the irritation so i thought well maybe i've done something wrong i don't know mm -hmm. and then um so i dropped him off at work and then when i went to pick him up he's like well i would really want to talk to you so we went and we sat and we we were talking and he was like I don't know why I, I don't know why I've been doing that. I'm sorry I'm doing that. Wow. And then he, uh, he just apologized. Wow. It's like he owned up to it. And I was like shocked <laughs> because before we're arguing over, wow. we're, you know, like, like he has this thing about expired food. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I'm like, well, it's it's still good, mm-hmm. even though the date is a little like the honey, like mm-hmm. oh, but it's still and it's only like a couple of days past it. Mm-hmm. He's like he refuses anything past expiration date. Refuses. Mm-hmm. So we get into these little debates here and there, and mm-hmm. um, you know, not not anything major, but like just this slight irritation right from attitude and it's like Mm -hmm. he's like i he's like yeah i don't i feel bad i don't Mm -hmm. i said well i don't want you to feel bad about it i just want you to i just want to know like what what it is is." yes and so i told him later i thought about it and i was like man i said (laughs) (laughs) traffic is very loud over here on this corner (laughs) where are we at like in raceville (laughs) we're in raceville um I said, I told him, I was like, you know, that was like such a mature thing to do was to come back and apologize. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like, this is what I'm saying God is doing in our yeah. house. Because that, that wouldn't have happened two years ago. There's no mm-hmm. way I would have ever expected that to happen. So, you know, um, yeah, there's just miracles happening everywhere. Right. And like, I just, I love all of it. I love, I, I love all the experience that I'm having. Mm-hmm. Um I'm not living in fear. Um, sometimes I get scared, but like mm-hmm. just regular human experience, not right. not like I'm petrified every day that exactly. I'm going to die or anything like that, like I was in my childhood. I was even wanted to go back to that. How is it different? Because it seemed like your 20s, you were attempting to do like behavioral modification is what I, that's like what I call it. In your 20s, you know, oh, the pastor's coming, let's put the alcohol away. <laughs> All that. I'm going to get caught. Like, yeah, it's like, how did it change from, you know, from you wanting, oh, let me watch how I'm speaking or how I'm interacting with people or what I'm doing now. How is it different now than in your 20s? Oh, gosh. Like, you, like, what's the, in, like I, what's the spirit well, energy behind it? What the difference is, is that um, I'm not giving in to temptations. Hmm. So we were just talking about that earlier. Yeah. So what? What's the? Because before it was it fear that was driving you attempting to. To um like your behavioral modifications in your twenties. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I I totally get it. So no, I'm here's here's if I'm saying it clearly. Here's enough. what I would say. It's like. I I picture myself like picture like a drawing of yourself. Mm-hmm. And then cut it down the middle. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that would be me. Cut, cut, cut down the middle. Mm-hmm. But let's move the line way over here. Mm-hmm. So the line is like from like maybe we'll just say it's like a quarter of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A quarter of me is over here for Christ. Got you. The rest of it is in the world. Mm-hmm. And as long as you have all of that in the world, I mean, we're talking, we're right. talking 80% mm-hmm. in the world mm-hmm. is going to be difficult to know who you are in Christ. Wow. Makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I feel like that was me in my twenties. Mm-hmm. That was me in my thirties and forties mm-hmm. and part of my fifties mm-hmm. too. I would say the line moved a little bit, mm-hmm. but now it's, You're all there's in. no line. You're now all I, in. I'm all in. So there was a question that came up. Wow. Uh, when was the last time you were all in for something? Mm. We're all in for lots of things. Like I went skydiving and I was all in. There's no way I could back out. I mean, I'm falling through the sky. I'm all in. I don't think you're going to be able to back out right. anyone. Right. So, so, I, so I'm all in, all in for things like that. Yeah. But then the question was, I don't know if God asked me this or someone asked me this, but when was the last time you were all in for Christ? Wow. And that was convicting. That convicted me. Oof. That was like, mm. that's when I saw the drawing mm-hmm. of the split. Mm-hmm. So, and wow. sitting in my office, I saw the dichotomy. Like there's two sides of the office. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I, I, I have an office where like when you walk in, I feel like it screamed doing, doing, get to work, success. <laughs> and then like you look at one wall and it's all like plaques and certificates and all these mm-hmm. add a girl things, you know, all these accomplishments and, 
and driven by success and money. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at the back wall, it's like love and peace and kindness and spiritual. <laughs> and, uh -huh. and so I had this split. Wow. Even up, even up space. until, even up until recently where, mm -hmm. um, it actually took a friend that said, I said, what do you like? Cause I was really feeling very convicted of changing the office. Mm -hmm. Like God wanted me to change the office. Like that's not an office anymore. Wow. And so, um, and that's where we did our last podcast. Yes. It was not in the office. It was it's a meditation so, room. Print room and, it was beautiful. Yeah. I just love, I love being in the space. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was like, I, I had a friend come in and I said, so what do you see? And she's like, well, I see a split. Wow. And that's when I have the picture of me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what percentage am I in for God? Mm -hmm. Am I all in? Mm -hmm. Or am I 80%? Or am I 40%? Or am I 30%? And it's, a lot of Christians could benefit from hearing this. A billion percent. Because like, mm -hmm. you go to church and then the next day you're, you're drinking somewhere and hungover or you're, mm. you're overindulging or whatever, mm. or you're, you're doing something that's not Christ-like mm. or whatever. I mean, we all, we all have sin, but exactly. what percentage are you all in? Right. And so, so for me, that was, that was a true conviction of mm -hmm. where I finally, I'm finally got it. Yes. It's like, okay, I finally get it. I don't have to live a dual life. Yes. I don't have to pretend Mm -hmm. When I'm over here with the eighty percent of the world and pretend that I don't love Jesus, mm -hmm. like I get to, I get to be me. Yeah, everywhere you go, a hundred percent. And so that's the difference. Wow, that makes so 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 much sense. I feel like that's a part of development. Um, is is deciding who you actually are, and yeah. and when you act, when you like you said, when you receive and you accept what who God said, mm -hmm. that's like the truest. And when you're, when it's true like that, and when it comes from a place of love, because God is love, yeah. then you can be all into that. Totally. You know what I'm saying? You can actually totally. rest on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like it. It brought me back to this innocence. Wow. You know, yes. like that child, like that childlike innocence. Wow. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean. I looking in the mirror, I remember, um, I, th I think it was probably four months ago, mm -hmm. right, probably right before the, or right after this brain stuff was going on. I just remember like walking by the mirror and stopping and doing this <laughs> and I'm looking in the mirror and I'm doing this in the mirror and, and God's like, you know, I love you. Right. <laughs> And I could feel like I was saying the words, but I yeah. felt like God was telling me the words. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you're a child of God. And you're like, and I was, you know, all these things were coming out. And I'm like, this is hilarious. I mean, I'm like. This. Yeah, I got to show you this picture of my son. He has a face like that. It's so funny. Yeah. I just love it. My it best so friend funny. showed him this face and then he did it in every picture for like two years. I've got to show you the picture. Yeah, because because everybody laughed. Yeah. Yeah. Now you get stop doing it. Hey, it's not funny anymore. This is a serious picture. Exactly. This is like an interview, like a headshot. Yeah. I got to show you. You're gonna love yeah, it. Yeah, that's funny. That is a gr that's great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's wow. See, those are just like I just hear God pursuing you. Just any in all those like. Those just moments, you just yeah. having so many moments with God and it's, it's and I continue life. to have them. It's just, it's, it's right. insane to me. Yeah. I'm like, why didn't I do this a long time ago? <laughs> I, wasn't <ready. laughs> I wasn't ready. Yeah. Relationship. Yeah. You, you, yeah. See, and that's what I think about too, is in relationships with people, um, you are excited about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that people see it as some spirit in the sky that if they yeah. don't see it you know yeah. right. I, I would say that's how i used to be too mm -hmm. it was like oh this is god looking down up down yeah, on like me you talked about well that. and i yeah. i i had a problem with um i'm glad that you said that because i had a problem with hell for a long time mm -hmm. and i had a problem with the enemy mm -hmm. and like and the reason why i had a problem with the enemy was because when i would go to church it was like Oh, it's the enemy did it. And I'm like, no, you did it. <laughs> you did it. 
Amy didn't do it. Yeah. You're the one that's you're the one that did it. Yeah. You took the action. Yeah. So I just I I just had a little issue with yeah. everything being blamed on some enemy. Yeah. The enemy made me do it. No, yeah. you did it. <laughs> you did it. Yeah, you stepped into penalty. that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Take some some responsibility. Exactly. You know, like so because I could say that. Oh yeah, the enemy made me go all stray. Go you know go have an affair or whatever. Um, so yeah, I had a problem with the devil, mm -hmm. the devil with the horns. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I told you this, so that's some weird stuff. I did some really weird things growing up. Like, like, um, I wanted to find hell. Yeah, <laughs> I, wanted yeah, to you see, told me. I wanted to see if it was real. Yeah. So I was like digging a hole in the backyard. I'm like eight years old trying to find the devil. Like yeah. I wasn't scared of the devil. I was scared of my mom. I wasn't scared of the devil. Wow. Yeah, isn't that interesting? It is. Yeah. And um, anyway, so I had this, like, after my divorce, mm -hmm. or going through the divorce, I just struggled, really struggled with who I was, uh, my identity in Christ, like, what what am I here for? What's God want for me? Like, mm -hmm. what's my purpose? All that stuff. And I just began to question um, heaven and hell and what was real and mm -hmm. I was like, there is no way there's a hell. Like, God's not going to send all his kids to burn in mm -hmm. this fiery pit. And um, I just had all these doubts and questions. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, if I say I don't believe in hell, and I don't believe in heaven. So wow. what do I believe in? And so I was in this really confusing right. place. And being in that confusing place, I just didn't believe anything. Right. And that's a scary place to be in as mm -hmm. well. Because you're not in your identity mm. you're just in you're just in kind of limbo mm. right yeah so i think having some you know having your identity like knowing who you are um and i just i pray for people that you know let's get back get you back to who you are who you are who yes. you're always meant to be mm. it's not about getting there because you're already that right. identity is understanding that you are you are that and getting mm -hmm. back to that innocence yeah like a child like mm -hmm. i just see myself as a little kid sometimes mm. walking up to jesus i have a i don't know if you saw that picture in my room my meditation room my prayer yes. room yes it's a picture of me and jesus and yes. i also found another one Ooh. at the thrift store of all places wow. of jesus holding on to a girl and yeah. the girl looks similar to me Oh. I was like, okay, sold. <laughs> I don't care how much that is. I'm buying it. Right. It's $6.99. Oh. That's such a beautiful so, image. Yeah. So. So how do you, how, do, what helped you? Because like talking about your mom and your parents and just the different experience that you had, experiences you had with them. What helped you separate that God is not your parents? Um, I think just time. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just time. And like, as you grow up, mm -hmm. you know, as you become an adult in mm -hmm. your fifties, <laughs> yeah, you start catching clues. <laughs> like Captain yeah, Catching like Clues. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh no. Yeah. He ain't like that. He He's ain't like not like yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think it's just time, and I think mm. um, talking to the right people and not being in the world. So the world is what messes it. You know, the, the worldly stuff is what messes us up, mm. right? At least mess me up. It's mm. like, well, who do I believe? What do I believe? Mm -hmm. And actually, it's even like that, like with the cancer stuff. I mean, it's like, who do I believe? Who do I believe? Who do I believe? Yeah. Do I believe the spin doctor, uh, vitamin people, or do I believe the medical people? Mm. Like, do I want to believe the medical people? Do I want to be like, what do I like? Oh, there's just so much information. Now it's even worse. Right. I feel like it's even more, there's even more of a pull away from that identity because you've got so much information out there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, For like, sure. you know, and then you've got Christians that are like not sure about their, what kind of Christian they are, mm -hmm. you know, like they're doubting who they are, what, what is their identity, you know? Right. And, um, that's so true. And then getting into, now we're getting into AI, which I have a problem with. Right. Artificial intelligence and like what is even real. Mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I think it's, um, really, well, I would say definitely get, 
back into the word of God for sure. Like that's, sure. that's helped me so much mm -hmm. just picking up my Bible and like mm. read, you know, reading something mm -hmm. and remembering, okay, yes, this is what it is. This is, this is who I am. Mm. And I, I'm giving it a hundred percent. Right. And this is who he is. This yeah. is who he is. And not and so shutting good. out all that everything media. Mm -hmm. Like I did a, um, I did a detox from, from social media and that was mm -hmm. one of the best things I could have ever done because I was getting I was when uh, whenever I was they told me that uh the cancer had metastasized in my brain mm -hmm. I just could not I could not stand my phone mm -hmm. it was the weirdest thing it was like God used this whole thing to like you do not like TikTok. You do not like Facebook. You do not like any of this stuff. I mean, I was like getting hateful. I was just like, yeah. I don't like any of this. This mm -hmm. is all fake. I don't even know what's real. Mm -hmm. I was annoyed with cancer patients dancing around with their cancer pull, their treatment pulls. I was getting really annoyed with all kinds of things. And I'm like, okay, God is like, just shut it off. You don't even mm -hmm. need to like, you don't even need to be involved. Like, right. what is the point? Mm -hmm. So I just stopped all of mm -hmm. it. I don't have face. I don't have Facebook on my phone oh, anymore. That's so good. Yeah. I mean, I have Instagram. I don't hardly get on there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some people send me messages. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but I think I was off for two months, wow. at least. Mm -hmm. And I just felt so much clearer. Good. So much clearer. Like I didn't have all this. Do this. Do that. Do this. Do that. Like. It's like, how do you know what to do? Right. Who are you listening to? And so mm -hmm. it's slowing down, quieting down, and listening. Because you're not going to be able to hear God's voice in all that noise. That is so true. It's, you know, if you're in the 80% of the world, you're not going to, you're going to hear 80% of the world, not God's voice. Uh -huh. But, you know, he does have a way of interjecting <laughs> yes yes that's true he does have a way of getting your attention mm -hmm. so yeah that's that. good yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah hmm. well i think we're we i think we've gone at least an hour okay. so that sounds good yeah i, I was up. i think that was really all the when you were sharing how you came to god how you had that identity those were the questions that really came to me when you were sharing yeah, and I think like if anybody has any questions, please feel oh, free to yeah. ask. You can you can mm -hmm. type your questions up, and yeah, I'll be we'll, we'll be more than happy. Stephanie will be more than happy to answer <laughs> questions about me. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. so funny. Yeah. yeah, this is good. Yeah, this was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, and absolutely. I, 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 just I did not know where that was gonna go. So me either. It's a beautiful thing. It is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's episode eleven. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to episode twelve. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>